Minister, the Maldives famously said that they were going to go carbon neutral in 2009. What was the motivation behind this declaration? To do the right thing. We, we know that is the only right thing to do. Uh, carbon is the, the issue. And if the thing that needs to be done is to go carbon neutral. And when you, when you uh, made this declaration, did you know how it was going to be achieved? Did you, did you have the plans all laid out neatly? We, we had an idea of what it's going to be, but we didn't have everything planned out. Um, but uh, we, we knew exactly you know, what carbon neutrality meant, and we knew how much, uh, roughly, what we were emitting, and what sectors uh, were emitting what. But we, we had to do a, a detailed assessment of, of that afterwards, and then we had to come up with the plan. And we, 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 th we think uh, we are fairly confident we have a good plan now, mm -hmm. and, and it will work. And can you sketch the outlines of this plan? How are you going to achieve it? Well, we've, we've identified the areas um, which needs to be dealt with uh, when going carbon neutral. Uh, domestically, it's the, the power sector and the transport sector. Uh, the two major areas. There are other bits, uh, small uh, uh, areas, which, which also needs to be dealt with. Um, for, the, for the power sector, uh, technology does exist. So it's, it's like the low-hanging fruits. We can start picking them right now, and, and that's what we've started. For the transport sector, we haven't found the solutions yet, but we are confident that uh, technology will, will develop, and we will have solutions for that too. In, in, in a very near future and we can still be able to meet our, our targets. And for lots of people around the world who are sceptical about renewable energies, they talk about the, the cost implications of this transition. What are the costs going to be for people living in the Maldives? For going carbon neutral, I think it would be less uh, costly. It would be, in fact, cheaper for us to go carbon neutral than staying on the path of development that we have been for the last three decades. Um, uh, Fossil fuel is not really an option for us. That's not something we have in the Maldives. It's not something we, we, uh, we get uh, uh, cheap uh, in the Maldives. Um, and it's not a, a something that stays uh, at a stable price. Um, but we have a uh, uh, lot of sunshine. We've got lots of sunshine. Every day is, is a sunshine. So plenty of that we have. And there are means to harness that. And, and that's what we're trying to do. It just makes sense. And this is obviously a really positive story about leadership and, and a progressive country, but are you seeing your leadership followed? Are other countries taking similar steps? A lot more countries uh, have, have followed the example of Maldives, and a lot more countries are now uh, putting themselves on a low-carbon development path. A lot of countries have also declared them uh, uh, going carbon neutral. Uh, at about the same time, uh, uh, the Maldives wants to be carbon neutral uh, and, and I think that's all positive signs uh, and the more countries um, are there on, on the low carbon development path the more opportunities the more market for uh, green technology and, and, and therefore the, the cost of uh, implementing those technologies will come down we should be able to compete with the old technology and eventually we will, we will face out uh, uh, the technology that has brought us to, to this uh, situation. And where is this leadership coming from? What role are rich countries playing? Are they at the forefront or not so much? Uh, some rich countries have given uh, us moral support and, and I think it's, it's important. Uh, moral support is, is more important than uh, uh, financial even. Um, some have provided with uh, small amounts of financial support, um, but we're, we're not really uh, counting on that too much to do what we have declared to do. And what role do you see these UN negotiations playing in your own transition and, and more broadly? Why are, they, why are they important for the Maldives? Well, the, the UN uh, uh, negotiations are here in Dur Durban and the one in Can Cancun and also the one in Copenhagen and the ones uh, prior to that, uh, all of these we are hoping to, to get a, a legally binding agreement uh, ultimately uh, to deal with the issues of climate change. Without the legally binding agreement, countries will not know what their rights are, countries will not know what they are entitled to, uh, countries will not, know, uh, will not know how to 
operate uh, uh, within you know the the rights of of their own so it's 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 very important that we have the legally binding agreement and that is what we have been uh, uh, wanting for the last uh, so many years and that's what we want even now although we know it's not going to be practically possible to have that agreement here in Durban uh, but we want to see countries agreeing uh, parties agreeing uh, uh, to a date by which we should have that agreement uh, without us setting that target we cannot go on with the uh, negotiations indefinitely uh, we don't come here to party do we and you've said we can't expect an agreement here in Devon. What are you looking to get out of these negotiations specifically this year? Well, we have uh, uh, the issue of uh, KP's uh, Cato Protocol second commitment period. I'm hoping that we will have an agreement on that. Uh, I'm also uh, hoping that we will agree on a date by which we should have the legally binding agreement on the uh, uh, LCA track. Um, I'm, I'm also hoping that uh, Developing countries, among developing countries, there are major emitters uh, uh, that they will start recognizing that they cannot be measured on the same scale as, as countries like us, and, and they also have a responsibility uh, which should be uh, uh, measurable, and, and we should have uh, targets at, uh, um, at a very n near future that they should also have binding targets. And presumably as ministers arrive uh, this week, they're briefed by their delegations on how the negotiations have gone so far and what their expectations should be in the following week. What's your outlook here for week two of the talks? Well, we'll we're going to start uh, getting more productive these two weeks. Uh, uh, these, the, the next, the next uh, four or five days. It's, it's going to be more intense. Uh, and, and then we're going to start seeing results. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we will have results by the end of uh, the summit. And um, I, 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 won't, I, I did mention about uh, uh, you know, some developing countries who are major emitters, but there are also de uh, you know, developed countries who have not become a party to the, uh, the Kyoto Protocol, who needs to show commitment and who also needs to demonstrate that they mean business and it's serious. Without all of us together, this is not going to happen. Minister, thank you so much for speaking to us. You're welcome.